everybody, Lord Tremendous here, got another battle report here for you, and I know what you're thinking, dude, you just put one out the other day, I know, but I'm on vacation, and we had a little mini Tremendicon 2016, a uh, handful of people, four people from uh, New Orleans drove all the way up to Shreveport, Louisiana, and uh, to, to beat my teeth in, and I thought that was very nice, so in honor of them, I'm trying to get these battle reports out as quick as possible, as well as possible, so that everybody, you know, is happy, and we got cool battle reports and hey if you guys get the benefit from all that who am I to interfere so we have I Lord Tremendous of the Ogre Cons versus Kinky Wrath of the Demon Legions and uh, I've never played the Demon Legions in Ninth Age there's a lot of firsts lately you know go figure we're only about, what, 13 battle reports in? So, yeah, there's going to be a lot of firsts. Uh, but, yeah, this is actually a very good game. It's crazy. And a lot of a lot of surprises, a few upsets, a couple of laughs, some tears. You're going to enjoy it. And if you don't, well, you don't have a soul, and there's nothing I can do about that. So <laughs> sit back, relax, and get ready to see how this one goes. Alright, here's my list, and uh, as I haven't made any changes, so it's going to be exactly the way it was. I do have some changes in the future, but not during the Mini Tremendicon. Uh, I have my great shaman, Kaka Shabadu. Uh, he's a level 3 wizard with Heart Ripper, Demon Heart, Talisman of Greater Shielding, Charm of Cursed Icon, and the Path of Butchery. I have my Khan. He's my BSB with a great weapon, Mithril Mail, uh, Gemstone Amulet, Rotten Jaw, and the Skull of Kang Hut, or whatever. Which I'm still on the fence on whether or not I want to keep. Next up, I have my Combustor, and yes, I have the new model. I'm very pleased with it. Uh, he is a level 2 Shaman with the Skull Splitter, Talisman of Lesser Shielding, and the Path of Fire. Love this model so much. And now, the real Lord Tremendous, please stand up. My mammoth hunter, Lord Tremendous, with an iron fist, ogre crossbow, armor of destiny, head hunter, and tusker. Anna Tusker. You are looking at the definition of perfection. That is the model, that is his base, it is 3D printed by the Punisher, it is my absolute favorite. Well, it's one of my favorites, but yes, I'm, I just, I have an army full of favorites, what can I tell you? And this is definitely at the top. Next up, I have my core choices, and leading us off, of course, is my 7 by Tribesmen with Banner, Musician, Iron Fist, and Heavy Armor. Uh, these guys are just m the spine of my army. Next up, of course, I have my 5 by Tribesmen, Banner, Musician, and the Banner Discipline, and this is the bunker unit for my Great Shaman. And then I have my uh, heavy chaff, I guess we'll call them, unit, uh, shoring up my core at uh, four bruisers. And these guys have proven themselves time and time again. Uh, starting off my special choices, I've got a unit of five by Scrappling Trappers. Here is my second unit of Scrappling Trappers. And of course, the baddest mofos on the table, my 6 by Mercenary Veterans with Banner, Musician, Iron Fist, Lethal Strike, Thunderous Charge, and the Banner of Speed. And yes, finally I remembered to put that damn model in there so that it was actually a unit of 6. I'm proud of myself. I know you aren't, but damn it, I'm proud. Here she is, the love of my life, my kin eater, Lady Elizabeth. Oh gosh, I would not want to have to fight this thing. And now we're into my rare choices, which of course is the Scratapult. And uh, I gotta be honest, I love the Scratapult. Don't get me wrong, very much enjoying it. But I'm toying with swapping them out for something else. Just simply because, uh, I'm, you know, just want to try something else. So, we'll see, we'll see. And of course, last but certainly not least, my Frost Mammoth, Rufus, with two Ogre Crossbows. Basically just a mobile bolt thrower that doesn't do multiple wounds, but I'm okay with that because it is him, Rufus, the baddest of badass Frost Mammoths on the planet. God, I love this thing. That is going to do it for my army list, so by all means, I'm going to play a little music and show you what my opponent has. Feel free to pause it at any time to see what he took.
here my spells and as you can see I've been working on painting the uh, 3d printed cars that my buddy made for me I'm not done yet kind of you know I got other things going on in my life unfortunately but uh, it's a start and I think they're coming out real nice and here's deployment um uh, just real quick i'm cropping the deployment and top and bottom of the turns after movement and everything like that so you guys can see the table a little bit closer kind of get all the background crap out of the way i think it looks better i like it let me know what you think in the comment section or don't it's completely up to you i have no doubt that i'm missing some stuff like for example in this one my deployment on the far left side there i do have my bruisers i cropped them out because well i kind of suck at this i think it might have been the picture more than actual uh the cropping but also in the ruins on the left side there i have a unit of trappers and that's because i want his uh crushers to go into the ruins and have to take dangerous terrain one checks but you know something not to mention every time they run out of there because it's two apiece you know it's eight dice he's gonna roll some ones hopefully and that'll be useful uh my mercs and lord tremendous there are in the middle and their job is to try to deal with this left flank because there's a lot of pain over there meanwhile my two units of tribesmen my scratapult and uh rufus are going to try to deal with the uh courtesan of lust the demonic engine and the little fury bastards that are over there there is a chariot over there but i didn't really know what it did so when it was over there i was like okay well let's see what happens i guess but yeah that's really what i was thinking about when i uh when i deployed i went first so i just kind of threw all my stuff down so um i kind of adapted my strategy after he deployed so let's see how it goes Here's my opponent's right flank. From left to right, there's his Crushers with the Harbinger of Wrath in there. He's got a unit of Sirens with uh, his BSB, Harbinger of Lust, and another Harbinger of Lust, both level 1s in that little unit there. Here's his center. On the left there, I cannot remember what they're called, Some like Blood Crushers or whatever the hell they were. Uh... Th that unit on the left there, it's the Wrath Core Choice Infantry. In the middle is his uh, Courtesan of Lust, which is his general, and on the right is his uh, demonic engine with the... Uh, no, it looks like it's Mark Lust, but no, it's actually Mark of True Chaos. And here's my opponent's left flank, which consists of uh, two units of Furies and the Burning Chariot thing. Here's my right flank, which consists of the unit of trappers on the right there, my scratapult, and my unit of tribesmen with uh, Kaka Shabadu installed. And here's my center. From right to left, there's my tribesmen with my BSB. I've got Rufus in the back there, I've got Lord Tremendous in the middle, and I've got my Merc Vets on the left. And my left flank, which consists of my combustor in the ruins there, and my bruisers over to the left, which you couldn't see before, and my other unit of trappers in the ruins on the uh, middle top left of the picture. Here's top one after movement, and I got to go first! Yay, me! Uh, things kind of go up. My trappers move up to bait the crushers. I figure if he takes it, great, he's going to be in the ruins taking dangerous terrain. If not, then, uh, well, they'll just shoot at him and hope to slip some past his armor and ward. My bruisers move up just in case those guys do slam into the, uh, into the trappers. Hopefully I can get a uh, favorable countercharge into a flank. If not, well, we'll see what happens happens. Uh, the combustor moves up so that he's in range to shoot and magic at the crushers. My Merc Vets and Lord Tremendous move up. I was It was kind of a feint with Lord Tremendous. I wanted to put pressure on the right side, but I had every intention in the world of putting him over to the left so that he could get into the Sirens or the, the Wrath Infantry or whatever uh, and back up the uh, Merc Vets. My unit of tribesmen with my BSB and Rufus, they start moving up a little bit because I don't know where he's going with that stuff, but I figured there's going to be a lot of chaffing with his Furies. Uh, and then my other unit of tribesmen with my Great Con and my Scratapult just kind of stay still. While my other unit of trappers move into the ruins up top there and uh, just get ready to shoot at some Furies because I know they're going to get charged. Nothing happens at all in magic. So we go into shooting, and the Scratapult, it's back on. It starts hitting again, and it gets a direct hit on the Furies, hitting all five. Unfortunately for me, I can't capitalize on it. Out of, four, out of five hits, I only get one wound through. Uh, I guess it's better than nothing, but I was kind of hoping to do more damage to him than that. Oh well, at least it's hitting. Over here, I know you don't see anything, but uh, the Skull Splitter shot at these guys and was able to slip a wound through as well, so there's now one wound on the unit, which is, uh, it's a start. And then Rufus fires both of his uh, ogre crossbows into the demon engine and slips a wound through. I was, I was surprised too, but I'll be damned. 
So with that being said, we go over here to bottom of one after movement, and uh, he comes at me. He's, he's not hesitating at all. His uh, crushers charge my trappers who stand and shoot, and it bounces off their shields or whatever, no problem. Uh, they do take some damage when they go into the runes, which you'll see in a minute. Uh, his sirens move up cautiously because they're not stupid. The, the little uh, wrath infantry guys move around just in case my merc vets decide to charge the sirens, and I'm just not taking that kind of bait. The Furies come up to chaff my tribesmen, although I see it as a chance for Tremendous to slam into them and possibly overrun into the Soul, uh, I'm not Soul Eater, the uh, uh, Demonic Engine. Uh, his other unit of Furies on the right flank charge my trappers into ruins. They stand and shoot, and even when they get into the ruins, I don't think they lose anything. His courtesan moves up behind the impassable terrain uh, Triceratops head in the middle there to basically do what Tremendous is doing, and uh, his chariot moves up next to the ruins to shoot and counter charge. That's about it for his movement. There's a better picture of his fury slamming into my trappers, and I honestly don't remember if my trappers were able to... Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, he lost a wound in, when the Scratifold hit them, so... Nope, that's why there's one missing. And there's a better picture of his crushers slamming into my trappers over here. And while my trappers weren't able to do anything with their stand-and-shoot reaction, which isn't a surprise, the ruins were able to put two more wounds in on the unit and a wound on his Harbinger of Wrath, uh, which is huge. So for 40 points... I put, I killed the model, and I took his harbinger down to half, or I'm sorry, probably a third, uh, or took that, took him down down by a third. So that's totally worth it. Nothing happens in magic or shooting, so we go into combat, and hey, go figure, the crushers obliterate my <laughs> trappers absolutely no problem at all. And then he reforms slightly like this, just so that my bruisers don't get like any kind of crazy uh, counter charge on him, and he's got more idealistic charges anyway, because apparently these guys aren't frenzied, which is uh, really, really good. So yeah, they stand there, but in order to charge me right now, they'd have to go through the ruins, which means more dangerous terrain, and I'd be fine with that. Then over here, my trappers don't do that bad. Uh, they they take one wound. They're not able to do anything back because they're not really meant for combat. Uh, the charge and uh, a wound to uh, to nothing. Uh, I think I'm stubborn because I'm in the ruins. I'm not 100% on that. So I take my break check. And I break. And I get run down. So... <laughs> Hey, they're only leadership six. They did well. I have no complaints. The uh, Furies took a test to go in, and then they took another test when they pursued, and he wasn't. He didn't roll any ones, so he was good. He was good. Can't fault my opponent for playing smart. So we go over here to top of two after movement, and there's a little bit. My unit of tribesmen with my general and my scratapult charge into the flank of the demonic engine. I don't know what it does. I don't know if it's stubborn. I don't know if it explodes when you get into combat with it, but you know what? I'm going to find out. Uh, tremendous charges into the flank of the Furies, and the hope there is to overrun into the uh, demonic engine afterwards before that combat happens, and then hopefully, hopefully, take it out, destroy it. I'm hoping that happens anyway. Uh, I, it was only at this point after everything was kind of synced up that I realized I needed an 11 or 12 in order to overrun properly, so more than likely not, but hey, it was an idea. Uh, my uh, Frost Mammoth moves over, Rufus moves over to the left to get just a better angle at shooting at uh, the Courtesan or whatever. And just in case this thing decides to charge Lord Tremendous, maybe I can get in there and uh, put an end to it, or at least lower his initiative by three, whether or not that helps. Uh, the Combustor, and the, he stays right where he's at, but my Bruisers and my Merc Vets back up. I'm just not ready to charge in there. It's not ideal for me, and uh, I just don't feel like throwing this game. So <laughs> I back up a little bit, not wanting to uh, just be decimated on my opponent's turn. So that's pretty much it for my movement. Uh, Elizabeth comes onto the table, and you can see her in the top right of the screen in the forest. I have her hunting that chariot down. I want her to get into that and kill it for me. There's a better picture of my tribesmen and my Scratapult slamming into the uh, demonic engine, and I'm looking forward to that fight. And there's a better picture of Lord Tremendous slamming into the Furies, and if nothing else, at least the Furies will be dealt with. During the magic phase, I'm able to get regen off on my tribesman unit, uh, which of course then makes it so that my uh, shaman is now plus one toughness and poison doesn't work. I don't know if this thing has flaming attacks or not. I knew it wasn't uh, mark a change, so I thought I'd be okay here, and it just, you know, it seemed like a good idea. 
during the match or during the shooting phase, I'm able to uh, skull splitter with the skull splitter put one more wound through on the unit of crushers, which is nice. I'll take what I can get. So uh, with all that over, we go over here into combat, and Lord Tremendous, being the man, the myth, the legend that he is, is able to obliterate the Furies. Go figure, right? And I know what you're thinking. What happened to that cool model you showed us? Blah, blah, blah. I, I didn't get it until after this game. So, Well, I didn't get the base for him anyway until after this game. So I'm still using the proxy, although legal, version of Lord Tremendous. So, yeah. But anyway, he, uh, he destroys the Furies, and then I overrun, like I said, needing like an 11 or 12 to slam into the damn. Uh, demonic engine and like a friggin champion I roll box cars <laughs> Lord Tremendous makes it in it was like two sixes and a three it was beautiful and he goes slamming into the demonic engine couldn't have asked for anything better so we go into combat over here and we do a bunch of damage to this thing I think it's got like one wound left at the end of the combat uh, and he's able to mitigate some of the damage that he took. He was able to put three wounds onto the, the Scratapult because he just threw all of his attacks into the Scratapult, which made sense. It was it had the lowest save and the easiest to hit. Uh, and uh, but I charged, flank, super flank, banner, like four wounds and a and a hill. To I think he did three wounds or something like that. So he rolls and he rolls like a three with his uh, general within 18 because he's a large target. And it was just enough. I think he had two wounds and I think he took one more uh, after, after uh, what's it called? Combat resolution and everything like that. His, his unstable check. So he doesn't go anywhere, but he's got one wound left. And at least I've got a hold of him now. It's not perfect, but what game ever is. You know what I mean? I'm still very pleased how, how this combat went. So with that, that's it for my turn. So we go over here to bottom of two after movement, and there's been a ton. Uh, his courtesan charges into the rear of Lord Tremendous, and I'm not going to lie to you even for a second, that worried the crap out of me. Uh, I just didn't know how he was going to do about that. I've never faced a courtesan before uh, in Ninth Age. I don't know what he's capable of, but he charged in just no hesitation so it makes me think that he knows something uh his crushers move normally through the ruins on the left flank there uh his sirens and his wrath infantry move up again we're, we're playing a game of cat and mouse over here it's just the way it's going his chariot seeing uh elizabeth moving up gets the hell out of there it's fly 10 or something like that so it got out of the way pretty easily and uh, his other unit of Furies on the right move to, I guess, harass or get ready to try to cause dangerous terrain checks for anything that might break in this next combat. So, interesting. Interesting to say the least. And uh, But that's it for movement. There's a better picture of the train wreck that this combat has become. Nothing happens in magic once again, so we go into shooting, and his chariot takes a couple of shots at my, uh, or takes a bunch of shots anyway. It's got some crazy, like, multiple shot thing, and he shoots into my tribesman and is able to put two wounds through on him. Not enough to pop a guy, but he, he's mostly dead. And then we go into combat. So, uh, his courtesan issues a challenge, and Lord Tremendous, of course, accepts, because he's the only one that legally can. Uh, my guys have no problem slipping the last wound through on the engine and destroying it, but that's only one combat res. I lose the banner, I lose the flank, I lose the rank, I lose a lot of stuff. Uh, the only thing I have is the one wound in there. Uh, his courtesan, uh, of course, is, can't wound Lord Tremendous. Lord Tremendous doesn't do anything back, I don't think. Maybe one wound. I win this combat by like one or two, It's or if that, and uh, I end up... Basically, we end up staying. I do try to roll the leadership to turn and face him, because I think I lose this one. I'm not 100% on that, uh, but uh, I can't. So I, I must have lost this one, and I must have failed my leadership. So what you see is what you get. That's it for my opponent's turn. So we go over here to my third, top of uh, three after movement, and there's a little bit. Okay, so I see that the left flank is pretty much this weird stalemate thing going on here and neither of us are going to be stupid enough to make the first move so I decided to try to bait my opponent. I threw my bruisers up hoping that his sirens and his crushers would take it and be kind of out of position so that I could go after his uh, wrath infantry with my merc vets uh, I figure if the combustor uh, gets gets attacked and harried for a little while it's better than losing my merc vets and, and Rufus and my right flank uh, to all that infantry so that's kind of what I was thinking when I put my bruises up like I did. Figured, why not? See what happens. 
Uh, other than that, Rufus turns now because the right flank is more or less under control. I sent my tribesmen in with my VSB uh, into the flank of his courtesan, and that was just for combat res. Flank, super flank, banner, BSB. And since they're in a challenge, they can't. he can't do anything about it. So as long as Lord Tremendous can make his saves, I should be able to stay in this combat. And if he loses a wound or two here or there, it shouldn't be a huge big deal because I'm plus four combat res. Plus five this turn because I charged. So we're, I'm hoping that this thing pops pretty quick and I can move on over to the left flank and deal with the wave of demons that I have over here. Uh, Rufus moves over to take some pot shots at the uh, crushers while he can. Figured why not. And Elizabeth runs over as fast as she can to try to get a hold of this stupid uh, chariot before it can keep shooting at me because I just don't like that. Also, uh, after combat last turn, my Scratapult turned to face the Furies and charged them this turn, slamming into them no problem. And uh, that's it for movement. Here's a better picture of my tribesmen and BSB slamming into the uh, flank of the courtesan, and the hope there was just to try to take as much combat res away from this thing as humanly possible. And there's a better picture of my Scratapult charging into the Furies. During the magic phase, I get smoldering embers off on my bruisers from the combustor, and the hope there was just, hey, maybe against all odds they, they survive long enough to swing back. And uh, then we go into combat, because nothing happens in shooting. And sure enough, my Scratapult, although it does take a wound for its trouble, is able to destroy the rest of the Furies, uh, which is great. And then it turns to face uh, the rest of the combat and just start, hopefully, you know, firing pie plates all over demons. Over here, it's with Tacular. I don't even know how else to put it. Uh, I, I get... I, I win this combat. Uh, he's got a rear... And I've got uh, two banners, charge, flank, super flank. So I win by three. I think this thing's leadership nine or ten. And he makes his break check no problem. Uh, I think the only thing that changes is that uh, Lord Tremendous does finally turn to face since I won this combat, which is great. But I was really hoping to win by more uh, and, and maybe take a few wounds off this thing before <laughs> it starts really beating on me. Because now I'm stuck there, and that kind of sucks. So we go over here to bottom of three after movement, and there's a little bit. He does take the bait. His sirens and his blood crushers slam into, well, his his uh, harbinger of wrath, I mean, charges out of the unit and slams into the bruisers. The sirens slam into the bruisers. The infantry uh, of wrath guys, they move up, and it's just a beautiful charge range for my merc vets. I thought at the time it was a beautiful flank charge for Rufus, but no, the impassable terrain was perfectly in the way. Very, very well placed by my opponent. I didn't see it until my turn when I was getting ready to charge and change my mind. On the right flank there, uh, his chariot tried to charge my Scratapult, and I decided to flee, and it redirected into my tribesmen, which is fine uh, the way I see it with my BSB and everything like that. That's just extra combat res for me. Uh, and other than that, nothing else happened in movement. There's a better picture of his chariot slamming into this crazy ass combat. And there's a better picture of my opponent running over my speed bump. <laughs> They're dead. And there's a better picture of my Scratapult running for its very life, which I'm totally okay with. During the magic phase, my opponent plays me like a finely tuned piano. I stop a couple of spells that would have lowered my toughness or made me stupid with weapon skill or something like that. And then he throws a handful of dice at Mind Razor and gets it off on his sirens. Oh, it was so well played. Even I was like, bravo. Bravo. So yes, his sirens now have Mind Razor. And if you don't know what that does, all uh, successful to hits auto wound. <laughs> My bruisers are so dead. So without missing a beat, we go into combat, and they beat my bruisers to death, even at plus one toughness, which didn't matter because of Mind Razor, and uh, with a five up ward, they just decimate my unit before I can even strike back. His Harbinger eats like two of them, or his Harbinger eats one of them, his uh, Crusher eats one of them, and then he brings the two Harbingers of Lust over, uh, they make way, and they eat my unit alive. They do 12 wounds, no problem. They do well over 12 <laughs> wounds, but yeah, what can you do?
Then he kind of reforms like this, which is great because I'm not charging the sirens when they have Mind Razor on them. The Harbinger and the Crusher of uh, Wrath, the Crushers of Wrath, they're stuck. The Crushers are stuck in, uh, what's it called, in the ruins, and everything else is, is kind of traffic jam. So the Bruiser's Demise did have purpose, and hopefully I can capitalize on it before I lose this game. So then we go into combat over here, and he's able to do a wound to Lord Tremendous with the, his courtesan. Uh, the chariot's able to slip two wounds through on uh, the tribesmen. I think I'm able to do one wound to the chariot, and I think Lord Tremendous does like three wounds to the courtesan or something like that. He loses combat in the end by like three, I think. I'm not 100% on that. His courtesan takes all, he's got one wound left after his break check, and then he rolls like snake eyes for his chariot, so it's perfectly fine. But that was the kind of combat I was looking for. His general is almost dead. If I can just slip one more wound through on him, I'm, I'm going to be okay. And uh, I'd like to be okay. So with that said, now we go over here to top of four after movement, and I finally blink. My Merc Vets charge into the uh, Infantry of Wrath. I move uh, Rufus up to lower their initiative just because I want to make sure that my Mercs get all their attacks before uh, my opponent can swing back. Uh, I don't know what these guys do. I don't know what they can... I know what the old blood letters used to be able to do. I don't know what Ninth Age, you know, uh, Infantry of Wrath do. So I moved him up just to do that six-inch aura I th and uh, hopefully make it so that I don't have to find out too severely. Uh, Elizabeth slams into the flank of the chariot, and that's outstanding. I'm hoping to wrap that combat up quick. My Scratapult rallies, which is also awesome. And I completely forget about my Combustor and my Tribesmen with my General. I'm so focused on the combats and particular units, I don't think to uh, Swift reform my General and the Tribesmen. I don't think to get my Combustor the hell away from those infantry and the Harbinger, or the, the Harbinger of Wrath and the Crush so they just stand exactly where they're at because I'm an idiot. That's it for movement. There's a better picture of Lady Elizabeth joining the fray. And there's a better picture of my Merc Vet slamming into the uh, Infantry of Wrath. And I'm excited about that because with Thunder's Charge and everything, I'm hoping to really put a hurtin' on this unit. And there's a better picture of my Scratapult rallying. Yay! During a magic phase, I get smoldering embers off on my Merc Vets just because, hey, any advantage is an advantage, right? And uh, toughness 5 with a 5-up ward, I think that'll be helpful. I go a little balls to the wall with it, though, and I throw, like, 4 dice at it, and uh, I end up miscasting 6, which kind of hurts. Uh, the wound does not go through. He rolls a 1 to wound him, so he's fine, uh, but it does end my magic phase. Over here, I'm able to destroy his chariot, no problem. Uh, his, I'm not able to do any wounds to the courtesan, but he's able to do another wound or two to Tremendous, so he's like got two wounds on him now. Uh, kind of sucks a little bit. I lose another tribesman from my brick there, so I no longer have a super flank, but I've still got flank, banner, banner, uh, you know, I don't have charge anymore because the, the chariot's destroyed, but I got the combat res there. He needs a three. He needs to roll a three in order to survive, and he does it. Son of a... Butthead. Potato. Curse words. <laughs> I was pissed. <laughs> no, I wasn't. What can you do? The guy was rolling bad all day. I'm not even going to lie. I felt terrible. His dice turned on him. But in this situation, they had his back, and uh, they kind of kicked me in the balls a little bit. So I guess, you know, they showed a little brand loyalty. Can't be upset about that. Over here, it's the best parts of the Bible. I kill all of those. I'm not even going to bother counting them because I don't think I can count that high. I kill all of those. My mercenary veterans like having thunderous charge. I certainly do. And in return, I take one wound. Needless to say, with combat res, he, he, he breaks. It just, the whole unit explodes. And then, so that I don't get, uh, you know, flank charged and destroyed, I overrun a solid 9 or 10 inches. It's, it's beautiful. God, they did well. 
So with that all said and done, we go over here to bottom of four after movement, and there is some. Uh, my opponent capitalizes on my stupidity on the left flank and slams into the flank of the Combustor with both the Harbinger of Wrath and the Crushers. Uh, I thought about fleeing, but I'm so close to the table edge. Even if I did make it, it wouldn't. It, it, he'd make it off the table, so all I can do is hope that he failed his charges, and he did not. Uh, his uh, Sirens, they just turn to look towards the center of the table table and face Rufus and now I have to decide whether or not I wanted to uh, charge them or not and I don't know uh, and and that's it everything else he has is either dead or in combat there's been a picture of my stupidity getting the combustor uh, in a combat that's really not ideal for him uh, nothing happens in magic or shooting so go straight into combat and it's not as terrible as you might think he flubs pretty spectacularly I do obviously call a challenge because I'm not completely stupid and he's only able to slip two wounds through on me but charge flank and two wounds to nothing he's only leadership seven I need a three to stay and I break, and I get run down. The combustor is combusted. Uh, his uh, Harbinger of Wrath uh, restrains, and the other guys, the Crushers, they pursue, and they catch him and destroy him. I rolled. I, I think I rolled the three that I needed in order to uh, break or see what my run distance was. So, Oh, well, what can you do? That's where everything ends up, and it's sad. But uh, let that be a lesson to you, boys and girls. If you're an idiot, your characters are going to die. Then over here, uh, the the battle starts swinging away from me here. I guess the courtesan at you know right at death's door decided to turn it up a notch. I wounded him like three times, and he made all of his saves. And then, well, you know, he he beats me up, and I make uh, I think he did two wounds to me. I saved one, so tremendous only has one wound left, and I I do like three wounds to him, and I think cool, it's over. Nope, he makes all the ward saves. So with he does a wound to my banner banner flank uh, I win by two and he again he rolls like a, a three or a four and he's perfectly fine and uh, we're still stuck like this it's unbelievable so we go over here to top of five after movement, and I decide to go big. I send Rufus in to the uh, Sirens, figuring that he would take his characters and move them over to whip at them. And I'm thinking, they don't have Mind Razor on them anymore. They're they're not that tough. Uh, I think I can take them. I, I think that the Mind Razor was the only reason that they did so well against the Bruisers. So I charge in there, and I'm character hunting. I'm going to uh, direct all my attacks against his characters, and I'm going to use Thunder Stomp to just get me combat res. Hold them there uh, for turn or two if Rufus dies that sucks but then my mercenary veterans can get in there and take these guys out with hopefully no harbingers of lust left in the unit and that should by the end of the game give me all those points that's the plan so Rufus goes in makes it like a champion uh, the rest of my army my Scratapult moves up onto the hill to shoot at the rest of his army mainly the crushers that are you know breathing down my neck uh, I remember my great shaman with my tribesmen and they uh, do a re form to face them because I'm going to start doing some tooth crackers at him trying to take them out and uh, Elizabeth moves over to try to get a hold of the uh, crushers because I think she'd do well against them and uh, that's it for movement. There's a better picture of Rufus slamming into the sirens and buddy if I ever needed you now is the time. During the magic phase, uh, I get Bone Crusher off on the Crushers, and I'm able to slip three wounds through on one, or however many it had. I think I think one was carrying two wounds. And uh, bottom line is, I'm able to pop a base, so that's friggin' awesome. And then over here, oh, we go into combat, and uh, his Courtesan of Lust is able to kill Lord Tremendous in the challenge. He only gets one more wound through, which really sucks, but that's all he had, and he beats him to death in close combat. Well fought, well fought, but damn, it always kicks me right in the stomach when he dies, and holy crap. Oh, well, I mean, at least he died to a courtesan of lust as opposed to, like, I don't know, a goblin on a wolf or something, but man, that, that breaks my heart a little bit. And to make things even worse, Rufus gets killed. Not broke, not beaten combat straight up killed uh, he is able to do uh, enough wounds to his BSB to kill him I'm able to put one wound on the other harbinger of lust because the, I was right they did both come into combat to beat him up and other than that I only did one wound on impact and they died uh, they just 
god, the sirens. Oh my goodness, they're armor piercing too, and so many attacks, and he just, he, he nailed them. And then with something else like uh, barbed claws or something, he's plus one to wound, so instead of needing sixes, he needed fives. I didn't know any of that going in. He did well, though. He was able to kill one of them. He took out the BSB, and then he took, uh, he, he took the one down to half health. So I still believe I have a chance, but golly, does that suck. And then fresh off of victory, they turn to face my mercenary vets, and that's going to go poorly. So we go over here to the bottom of five after movement, and my opponent's uh, sirens charge into my merc vets and make it no problem, and that's got me worried. Uh, and his other is Crusher's, uh, I th Crusher, it moves up just trying to get in there as quick as it can, uh, maybe try to sweep up Elizabeth or something over here, I'm not really sure, and his Harbinger of Wrath moves over to get an angle on the Merc Vets if uh, this combat lasts a couple of rounds, or a couple of turns, so that that's really it. There's a better picture of a Siren slamming into my Merc Vets, and I'm not feeling good about this one. Nothing at all happens in the magic phase or shooting phase, so we go into combat, and uh, his courtesan issues another challenge. My BSB is the only one that can accept it, and he does, and thanks to the gemstone amulet, he does two wounds to me. I save one thanks to the gemstone amulet. I think I take that back. I think he did three wounds to me. Uh, I saved one with armor, and I saved one thanks to the gemstone amulet. He takes another, and then he puts his great weapon into the face of that mother effer, and kills him. Slips the last wound through, destroys the courtesan, and, and that's it. Return to phase where the crusher's coming. So it cost me way more than I wanted it to, but damn it, we got the damn demon, and uh, now I feel like I'm back in this game. I feel that that might have swung it my way. Then over here, it does not go well. My uh, Merc Vets, I'm able to finish off the uh, other Harbinger that had one wound on him. And I think I do four other wounds to the unit. Meanwhile, he does like seven to me. He wins this combat by an atrocious amount. Uh, charge, rank, two ranks, banner, and seven wounds. I think I did four, five wounds and a banner. Uh, yeah, I lose by, I think I need a three to stay. And I break. I think I might have auto-broke. I think he beat me by that much. And we, we flee. And we get caught. No problem. It's, uh... Oh, it's tragic. So, uh, you know, I went from a high from killing the courtesan to a low losing my Merc Vets. But uh, that is a tough-ass unit to beat. And uh, I was impressed. I was impressed to see how much more powerful they had become. So, I enjoyed it. Definitely not going to underestimate them again. Oof. Never again. So here we are, top of six after movement, and I think I tried to charge his crusher, just, you know, long distance charge, why not, might have some fun with it, and uh, with my BSB and, uh, what's it called, tribesmen, and fail, Elizabeth falls back behind them, because I'm pretty sure the crusher can take him on the charge, and so she just gets the hell out of the way. The tribesmen, with my general move in such a way that uh, he would need boxcars in order to hit him, if at all, and my Scratabolt stays on the hill, just to shoot at him and uh, maybe Hail Mary do a wound to him. Yep, there's a better picture of a fail charge on my end, so if I don't kill this thing this round, it's going to charge me next turn, no problem. But it doesn't matter, because my general takes him out with Bone Crusher. I'm able to do three wounds to him exactly, and all three get through. Not only killing the model, but securing the points for the unit, which uh, I felt at the time especially that I desperately needed. I used five dice to cast, I'm sorry, I used four dice to cast the spell, and I got uh, overwhelming power. I ended up rolling a ten. I lose two wizard levels, but I don't care. It's top of six. I'm not casting anymore. And all his casters are dead, so it is what it is. Miscast ten for an entire unit of crushers. I'll take it. I think that's fair. And that's it for my turn. We go into my opponent's turn, and he looks at the table, and he goes, there's nothing for me to do, and we shake hands. The game is officially over. As you can see, there is a mostly untouched unit of sirens and a harbinger of wrath on the table for the demons. On my team, I've got my tribesmen, my BSB. 
Elizabeth, my uh, other unit of tribesmen with Kaka Shabadu and a less uh, one quarter health <laughs> scrap launcher. So uh, it's looking pretty good for me. And uh, you know what? We'll get to the recap in a minute because first I want to tell you guys about uh, TMS's thing and then we'll go over the recap. So you're just going to have to live with that. Tell him, Captain Picard. I think so. All right, guys, uh, Tabletop Miniature Solutions has got an Indiegogo campaign going on right now in order to make and produce these uh, magnetic uh, bases and stuff like that for all your T9A needs. And uh, the cool thing about it is that they come magnetized and everything like that, but it's like the magnets that they use don't have that weird polarity shift, you know, how sometimes they kind of like bounce on your ma uh, movement train and stuff like that. Go to the website. It's in my description. You can see all about it. There's a whole video where he explains it. The magnets are awesome. The bases are awesome. Everything about this is awesome. And you can get it on the ground floor with the rest of us. I've already donated. I'm in on this. And no matter what the outcome of this Indiegogo campaign is, he, whether he makes his, uh, his goal or not, all bids will be on. Honored. So if you're promised something, you're going to get it regardless of outcome. So you cannot lose. We all like bases. All of us. They've got new ones coming out. They've got plane bases. They've got all the bases for all your basing needs. All you have to do is get up off your lazy butt. Actually, no, that's not even true. You don't have to. You literally just have to open another tab go over to it you know you can copy and paste the link in my description and then throw 20 50 100 a thousand whatever the hell you want to throw uh at the campaign and get yourself some bases it's that simple you cannot lose i wouldn't set you up for failure go check it out you won't regret it tell them tremendous sent you so yes, in the end, it was a victory for Lord Tremendous. I got 2,015 points out of him. He got 1,359 out of me for a difference of 656 points. I ended up losing the Combuster, Lord Tremendous, my Bruisers, both units of Trappers, my Merc Vets, Rufus, and uh, my Scrap Scratapult was at half, or was at quarter, so he got half points for him. Oh man, lots of ups and downs in this game, but damn, was it fun. Some things that went really well for me, other than the fact that this was a crazy good game, was the fight between uh, Tremendous and the Lust Demon. That was just incredible. I should have died like three times. I'm not even going to lie to you. My dice were rolling so hot, I have third degree burns on my palms. It was amazing. I was rolling like a madman in Vegas that had a cocaine, uh, cocaine addiction that just needed to be sated. I could not fail. It was beautiful. And uh, that's honestly what kept me in this fight for as long as I was. I, I was rolling just hot, hot, hot. So yeah, I learned some things in this game. Sirens are incredibly dangerous and you should not underestimate them for any reason, especially the way I did. Harbingers of Lust will haunt my dreams until the next terrifying thing I run into. Uh, that demonic engine can take some serious damage before going down. And that really surprised me because those units back in the day were, weren't really anything to worry about once you got them in combat. Uh, but most of all, I mean, I hope you took the time to look at the pictures and just saw how beautifully painted this army was. All of it. Uh, it, it's rare that I get to play against an army that's as well painted as this, and uh, I, I really enjoy it. I know mine's not fully painted yet, and uh, we're working on that, but uh, his army was, was really something to behold. But, you know, you all saw it. This was a really excellent game. This was a really excellent opponent. And uh, I gotta take a minute and just thank them for coming out from New Orleans, driving all the way up here just to kick my teeth down my throat. I really, really do appreciate that, and I really enjoy it when we do these little mini Tremendicon things, and it's absolutely terrific. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the next time I get a chance to play any of these guys. They're all wonderful opponents and wonderful people. If you get a chance to play against them, take it, lie, cheat, steal, kill, and, and get a game in with any of them down in New Orleans. They're wonderful opponents, and you're not going to be disappointed. But guys, thanks again for doing this. But yeah, that's going to do it for this one, guys. Battle Report number 13 is officially in the books. And, uh, you know, for an unlucky number, this sure was a hell of a game. Uh, you guys have seen the, the game played multiple times. But I mean, you know how much fun it is. You haven't gotten to the Ninth Age website by now. Then you just like being in pain, and there's nothing I can do for you. But uh, if for some other reason you haven't, get over there, check it out. All the rules and army books are free. You can't lose. I wouldn't set you up for failure. I wouldn't do that. 
But, uh, yeah, guys, that's going to do it for me. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, feel free to put them in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. But, yeah, guys, thanks.